So, and thank you for the interest in the snapshot project. So, this project has been initiated a while back. We do some other work. It's been a little progress, and we still, but um, I think now on this part, we want to put more like, effort and focus on this, and hopefully, we can get more things done. And um, so, uh, probably you already familiar with snapshot, and I will just give background and why we need snapshot. And uh, starting from like, what workflow will be uh, support for snapshot feature. So it's quite straightforward, right? We need to create snapshots, and uh, we propose to have two API objects, so one with snapshots and one with snapshot data. And it's very similar to PDC PD relationship. So one with snapshot is a more like a request for snapshots, and you want to take snapshots from the body. So that API object has a reference to a PDC name. So you know, the picture will know where you want to take snapshot from. And uh, the one central data encounter contains the detailed information about snapshot itself, the like, like ID, the like, like type, and it is now in this API object, so only this is unique access it. And the life cycle of these two objects after it's created is independent of the PDC and PD. So if your PDC PD deleted, you can still use your snapshot API object to like, use it to create new volumes. And for delete, snapshot is also straightforward, right? If you delete snapshot, the volume snapshot API object, it will also delete the data object and uh, the, the underlying snapshot. And for use snapshot, uh, they say that's where snapshot uh, is very valuable. So you can create new volume from snapshot. So instead of creating an empty volume, right now the data will be populated into the volumes. And also you have a chance uh, to change your volume configuration, a uh, different type of volume, or like increase the disk size. And this is um, how we create volume from snapshot. Is almost exactly as you create a new volume. The only change you need to do is uh, you add a central source information into the PDC uh, API object or YAM file. And this user already familiar this workflow, but it has some uh, problems. First, you need to modify your PDC YAM file, the source file. In some cases, it's not uh, applicable. And also, you cannot work with a PC that currently you use. In use, that means like a pod currently running, which is used this uh, volume. Right? So I'll explain in more detail uh, what that means. So, since a running pod is referencing this PVC PV, right, and you cannot uh, there are three leads for be able to change the underlying as a base volume. You have to go through these steps manually. The delete part first, and then delete uh, is PVC, so that it, uh, the volume um, will be deleted. And then you can modify your PC young file and. Uh, um, to add this snapshot information and then replace the PDC to which we provision a new volume from snapshot after the volume is created. This PDC pair is created, your pod can restart and start using this new volume you provision from snapshot. And you can see during this whole process that the application probably have to go down for a long time. And uh, this is um, a new like proposal to support what we call in place restore volume from snapshot. And uh, what user need to do is just make a request. They want to restore this volume currently used and um, from a snapshot. 
And when this request comes in, um, the controller will, as this animation shows, first provision a volume. Of course, it um, will use a different PV uh, API object to represent it. And when it's ready, uh, the pod can be um, killed or deleted. And the PVC, so the controller will see PVC no longer in use and instantly switch the pointer from the original PV to the new uh, PV prime. And this switch, uh, you can see it should be very quick. And at this point, the pod can be resumed. And so after that, the pod basically will use the new volume created from the snapshot. So the downtime of that part is just the time that PV needs to switch the pointer from the old PV to the new PV prime. And uh, uh, so we, for this restore request, we actually want to propose to use a new API object. The reason is uh, this process kind of involves several steps. We want to have some uh, API. To make this app into running uh, as long as it can, and but it has a problem. Let's say it lose some information, or it wants to let's say change the volume uh, to a different type. Let's say from the PD standard PD to let's say uh, SSD, or some other reasons uh, they don't want to kill the pod for a long period of time and recreate it after you you can change. So that means you have to change your pod stack, right? To uh, use that new PCPD pair. And uh, that gives a lot of limitations for users. They might not have a way to, let's say, directly change their pod stack, um, or it's not convenient for them to, to do that. Or for a single set of application, so because the PDPC name is prefix. So what you can change is just a PVC template, uh, which um, will not work well without this in place uh, install. So we've been working on this because of those limitations. So we want to support this. Yeah. So the whole motivation is just so that users don't have to rewrite their pods back. Um, one is uh, pause back, and also you have to um, modify a PDC uh, YAML file if you want to take restore from the snapshot. But, yeah. but your previous use here, I could create a PDC prime that's in this PV prime here. No, you, and uh, this is, over this is uh, kind of the changes in the PV controller we can accomplish it, but the user cannot do this step by step. User cannot directly <laughs> do this. It's hard for them to. They can't. Well, yeah. they, they can't move the arrow that you moved on this slide from PV to PV prime. But they could, following um, following suggested here, they could create a PVC prime that is the restore of a snapshot of PV. Mm -hmm. Right into PV. Prime. They could, but I think so the, the big use case that the in place restore solves is stateful set. So if you look at a stateful set, you have like X replicas, but each one of those is essentially a name. And if you have a name template PVC with it, each one of those PVCs has identity. Okay. And so now if you want to restore the volumes for the stateful set, doing it by creating a new volume is not going to work. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yes, the simple set example here, you can see in the young files set, what you can do is you have a volume claim template, right? And uh, so 
if you want to restore from snapshots, actually you put snapshot source there, but that means all the volume, uh, the new created volume will start from the exactly same snapshot. That's also another limitation. Okay. So, yeah. so this argues that we've got a reason why we actually need to re-aim a PPC. And so I guess a, a follow-on question would then be, should we be making a special case for snapshot restore? Or should we be making a way such that PVCs can be re-aimed, if you will, for general storage migration, right? So because we're essentially doing that here for restoring snapshots, mm -hmm. but maybe I actually want to migrate or migrate data for another reason. And so it would be useful to be able to re-aim a PPC. So it's like restore volume from another source. So I want to move from EBS to Gluster or you know from EBS over to uh, Portworks volume or something. Um, you know, that's the case where I'm not going to be able to restore a snapshot because I'm changing the actual backend storage link. Mm -hmm. And so you know I could have an external process. They could do data migration in the background, but I still need to regain my PVC at the end of the day. I think you can regain your PVC today if you change your pointer. I mean, there's like, you have to modify the PVC to change your pointer, and you have to modify the PVC to point to the PVC. You can, it's there's uh, an API calls that whatever my initial pointer is. It might work, uh, but it's, it's kind of subtle. You need to be careful how to change the pointer. Yeah, we do not support this publicly, right? Like, <laughs> there was much care going into the binder, and we yes. anticipated nobody re recharging the PPC. Right. So, so doing, it, doing it manually is very painful. Uh, Snapshots wants to automate it because they have a very specific use case. I think the use case that you laid out of migration is also very valid. Um, right. Instead of having a generic mechanism for just being able to swap PVPCs, I think we need to look at the more holistic use case of migration, um, how to import and export the snapshots across clusters. And one piece of that is going to be doing in place uh, swap. Uh, but let's address that independent of snapshots. Right. It's, uh, I think we are also trying to work on the data migration, those kind of plan. But, uh, so for this part, it is more focused on um, step on this case. And uh, I'm just concerned that we're going to end up with a whole bunch of things that are similar, and then we have to maintain them all. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Yes. We, we can think from, like, uh, the, the challenge with the yeah. migration is that there is no common standard snapshotting format that every storage system agrees on. Right. Um, if we had that, I think like as an orchestration system, it would be pretty easy for us to tap into that and do some cool stuff. Uh, I think that's been a limitation in a lot of places for Kubernetes, like the ability to standardize on some of the data services like object stores. It would be really cool if we could do that, but we're just limited by the fact that the standard doesn't exist yet. And we're not in the place to actually define the standard for a number of reasons. Um, so we could we could just follow you know, from that. I think it does actually have that. It does make sense because even to the controller to materialize a PD, whether it be materializing it from a snapshot, materializing it from a migration process. And if we had uh, a generic way of just saying, we have a PD, I want this PD to be a point this one now, yeah. um, I think we'll open up a lot more use cases. So it's like we're implementing that already. Um, I think that's a fair point. Uh, I don't think anyone's been looking into the migration use case deeply. Uh, sounds like YouTube might be the best candidates for that. Yep. If you could evaluate this design from that perspective, I think it would be worthwhile to ensure that we align with something that ends up being useful in both places. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So this is new like things we proposing and from like information we get, but people their own. You mentioned that all volumes of table set were sort of insane. So if you use this way, uh, like use this volume claim template and uh, with snapshots, right? Uh, 
similarly, you can put a source there, just like you could easily add a source. So in this way, yes, that means all the volume will be like created from the same snapshot. So because the verification of template, right, is it all the PVC will create from this template, and they will have the same snapshot information. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And uh, for this new in place restore, uh, basically the changes just in, will be inside of the controller, and we already prototype it, and uh, it's working seems fine. And uh, the change is simple, uh, but it's quite minimal, and to support this. And um, so. Those are basically what the basic workflow we want to support for snapshot. You can see those are kind of minimum workflow. Uh, those will build a, a foundation um, for users to be able to build their, like on top of it, build their higher level operations. And uh, we have been working on some, let's say, policy based snapshot management uh, on top of that, so you can use custom controller to. Customize your snapshot policy, apply it, and the controller will automatically um, create snapshot, in snapshot, etc. So, but for us, right, what we want to provide the most basic building uh, block functionalities. Yes. Uh, so, the previous one that you mentioned, same proof that all are going to be stored from the same snapshot? Uh, from the yeah, from the uh, So, I was kind of wondering when you use the same proof set, generally the PVC gets created. Is an ordinal index in that, right? So mm. if I'm having four instances, four number of replicas are four, I create when the thick set comes in, it creates four PCs, each one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, so if I think a snapshot in such a way that I also have the next time like zero, one, two, three, because four different applications yeah. are in four different set of data. Yeah, so it's we store all of them in the same fashion, right? Instead of going to a single copy. So do you yeah. mean that or you meant Single the single snapshots. Uh, and then there are same thing. two different use cases. The one you mentioned here is a little bit odd, where you have the same snapshot populating all your all your instances. Uh, you should be able to do it both ways. Uh, just the way that you templatize the name of the PVC, you should be able to templatize the source of your snapshot. Um, you're going to need a higher level controller that manages this. Once we have these basic Snapshot primitives in place, we can build stuff on top at the snapshot or at the stateful set level to allow uh, doing a, a controlled uh, snapshot of an entire stateful set. Uh, it requires coordination at the workload level because it depends on the type of workload that you're snapshotting. If you have data that's striped across a bunch of different nodes, you probably also need to implement each of the support. Uh, we expect not like a lot of work on that. Um, it's just um, so. So, the project will contain all the information about that snapshot, and then we provision a new volume that the computer will get the snapshot in the object. Uh, from the snapshot name, the snapshot source, and then you find out what's the snapshot uh, ID. You trace and, it back to the volume. And chart. then the, the type of the volume still be um, decided. 
headlines selling to us, including water. It's not a good So uh, let's make sure we understand the use case here. Are you saying that when you're creating a new volume from a snapshot, you want to have some sort of pointer back to the original volume to ensure that the storage class you use is compatible with the site? Like if we accept the snapshot, uh, you know, the standardized thing that you can get anywhere, then, then you any new volume that gets created from the snapshot has to be created by the same plugin that created that snapshot. I yep. think that, 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 that information is encoded into the snapshot object. Okay. So part of the snapshot mm -hmm. object says this is the type of volume plugin that created this. So when we try to restore it, it automatically. Okay. No, that, that didn't change yeah. the size. Kubernetes not yeah. copying data, it's just doing a control point yeah. call, say, take snapshot. If, if you do that, Yes. Uh, yes. the um, So it is usually that is just uh, a similar controller of the <laughs> Uh, yes, so so the question is whether it is a bonnet and then it will fail. You may not know in advance that there is a or not. So if you try to it's what it's then it's not it's not so it's Or you have some other requirements, so we can work on that. So that will go over the CSI center.
No, it's just oh. <laughs> I'm trying to, I think mute. So 
basically we had a snap. So if you go to this snap, it's going to give you a snapshot message. Snapshot, you actually have a snapshot status. So status, um, it's either ready, ready meaning it's a, you know, it's cut and uploaded. Uploaded. It's a hard process. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, snapshot is not blocking. The snapshot return. There is a percent, percent, percent. Oh, that, that I think yeah, that that would be some. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so so whatever we have right now is basically it's it's going to be a snapshot, it's going to return immediately with whatever status that is. So it's going to tell you that it's still uploading, right? So it's still uploading, it's still uploading. Uh, but we don't have a progress, but we don't have a progress. I think mean, it's maybe difficult to tell how long it's going to take. Because in order to you know to tell the um the progress, you'll have to know approximately right. Maybe based on size, how long it takes, but I'm not sure if the the pro. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have. You don't necessarily have that information. I mean, even from a storage device, it may not have that information. I, I, I get where you're you're going, and I think it might be something that we could add on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, actually the details field is for the less if you know some error happens. The details field is a string and gives you more detailed message because the status only tells you if it's errors like Ina it doesn't tell you exactly what's the error. What I meant yeah. was um, it can be, can be used, used for uh, so that I think if you want to add that that would be a separate field. I mean that's that maybe I think that would be something that we can we can add on in the future. Um, yeah, so right now the, the purpose of the details field is for a uh, mess, you know, basically what, ha what happened if something went wrong. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Yes, that's not so much about the storage management, it's just about the execution of the work. So if you're looking more about getting more information about the storage itself, you may have to go to the storage itself. This is just so that the the CEO, the senior of the system system, has the ability to create a snapshot. So not so much manage what's happening with the snapshot. Does that make sense? It does. The user who can see the face, they need to go to the store. I mean, Kubernetes is a different model. It's not somebody logging on and the user and saying, oh, I'm going to do that. It's usually an automated process. The user's name is not right. It shouldn't be doing any of the snapshots. I don't, I don't think anybody's disagreeing with you, I just yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not really uh, even being actually having some sort of uh serious side of the in the mind of feel as in some sort of progress or good things, maybe machine reader will see this is easy yeah. in, in, in that same manner we could add functions again like the volume status, uh, storage status. Uh, I think if we wrote that's more more about managing the storage because again what I'm trying to say is that it's just about the execution of it. I completely agree that Kubernetes uh, it's not necessarily about management, it's about finding out more about the action that you've executed. I create a snapshot. I want to find out how like is it hours? Is it days? Is it minutes away? How, how much time do I have left until this thing is ready? Which is, um, I think that's information on top of this in the future. Uh, it would be nice to have, but it's not critical for the new one to, to think about for, for, for the change. Then we the some of the volume matches, some of the other work that you can add. 
good buy-in because that trace will naturally be about how long is a certain conversion distance. Maybe we can we can talk about that. Yeah. Sometimes users only have the Kubernetes in the IP Yes. And there could be some sort of Snapshot object. 
um, it's worked for us. I don't think async versus sync, me and Brad had a huge discussion about this in the beginning, uh, ends up buying you much. Um, uh, in this case, uh, even if your create off the snapshot ends up taking a significant amount of time, um, it just means that rolling back is a little bit uh, longer than, than would otherwise be possible. Considering the, the use cases, the actual concrete use cases that we've looked at, the creation of the snapshot is actually much faster than the upload. And so optimizing for uh, uh, having a good story around being able to cancel the upload part, but not necessarily doing that for the uh, create call to all the I think the trade off that, that uh, we're okay with. I think the a point is that the create call being fast is like not even the most important part. It's that you need the volume ID to do anything to that volume, to the snapshot afterwards. And like, so the, the portion of time between you requesting a snapshot and you getting the volume ID, that there's no benefit to making that asynchronous because yeah. if it's an asynchronous call, you don't get the volume ID until later. There's nothing you can do with that. In that that's a very, very good well. yeah. And it just so happens that create is that period of time where you get the volume ID at the end. And so if you need that asynchronous to get that, then you can decide what to do with that volume. Yeah. Exactly. If your create operation takes a very long time, your hands are tied. You don't have to get an ID until it's done. But what happens if the GRPC timeout happens? <laughs> uh, no, no, that's perfectly fine. If there's a GRPC timeout, then the call is supposed to be on hold. You don't have an ID. No, you have to be called. So there is a uh, ID that can be passed in as the name. That that is. And so if for whatever reason you have a network error or something happens, you just reissue the same call with the same ID, uh, and then the uh, backend can pick up the same operation. So that's, so that's the same. You look at the, you can see this one, but the name is actually the one that you're passing when you create snapshot. So that is also unique. When you call, when you call create snapshot again and again, you're passing that name. So you when, pass it when, you, you generate again, it. This is something that uh, generated by SEO, but then when uh, a human finishes the snapshot, it's going to return it with a snapshot ID. So that, that part is absolutely confusing. That, that one is like, there's an ID you have something like that. The snapshot itself from the vent with volume, and then there's an ID that we pass in to right. identify the call. Right. Both create volume and create snapshot for item potency. At each create call, there's a name that gets passed in from Kubernetes for the volume or for the snapshot that's used for item potency. The tracking identification. As a tracking identifier. And then once the operation completes, the storage system says, that's great, but here's the actual identifier for future operations on the uh, In this case, it's a uh, string name. Uh, okay, I missed this part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I was looking at the one before that. Okay. Yeah, it's just a source model ID name, and then the secrets, and then the parameters. Yeah, so based on your uh, two controller capabilities, I believe here, one is create the snapshot, and the other one is this snapshot. So uh, because the, the to use a snapshot is to create a volume from it. So initially get kind of another uh, capability and we drop that one. Basically, if you uh, support creating the snapshot, you have to support create a volume snapshot. And this, this, at least snapshot is optional. Um, you can use that if you, you know, if you need to upload, you can use that and uh, pass in a snapshot ID as a filter to get a snapshot. This doesn't say you have to be able to create all your snapshots, so you should, should support it. It doesn't say must support it. Uh, I need to <laughs> support it. I think it's it. Should be must. Oh, I think it's it. Yeah, it should be must. I think this one. Okay, yeah. Change that to say. Sharp eyes. It's must. Yeah, I think it's a must. Where's your PR? Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> There's no restore volume from a snapshot. Can you restore volume from a snapshot? Yeah, you can revert, right? So if we talk about that, if you revert, it's a totally different case. So we can add that in the future, but it's not going to be in the same create volume as snapshot. Right? 
This is how they're really creating a new body on the switch system. And we were here really using it already for the next two months. So that could be something in the future. But there's no time between the snapshot and the future. So you want to add that in the future, and there's no relationship between the snapshot and the future. Well, there's the snapshot and the future. Yeah, there's, no, there's, there's a source volume. Yeah, there's a source volume. But when you create a snapshot, there's a source volume, right? If, if your back end doesn't know what volumes it's snapshots are for, then you got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you can delete the volume. <laughs> then your snapshot. Then your snapshot. Really it, it's all. So part of the state is in the back end, and then we have a minimal amount of state. But they said the license snapshot is not related to the license volume. So there are two different states here. You have your API objects, and then you have your volume snapshot and volumes. So what is the snapshot response? So response, right? So the on the right hand side, that's the snapshot message. It will return in size. Um, and then that's and then that's basically the full size of that snapshot. So you, when you create the water volume, you have to be either equal to or greater than that size. ID that's the from that's generated by the plugin, the ID snap ID, and the source volume ID is there, right? But if you <laughs> if you can delete that, I mean, then it's probably not very useful anymore. But I mean, I think it's really kind of back end. Because actually, Sorry, so the, the concern that you had then, what, what was it? And just, do you think that after the snapshot created the volume, the original source volume was deleted? Or? Yeah, 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 you create a snapshot and you can associate DB. That, that's okay. So once the snapshot is created, the snapshot exists. If the source for most of these sources, the snapshot is independent of the, the source volume. So, so I think what you're saying is that you can have the word and actually yeah, yeah. yeah, so you don't have the origin volume you revert to. The word the quad oh, original place. Yeah, then you don't have that you can why would you call it if you read the volume? Then why would you need to use the volume for the book? Oh no, this one does not cover the word, we're just talking about that something you have to yeah, you have to restore your snapshot data to your original volume and your source system, then one does it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, a good it's, question, though. I think it's worth clarifying. The CS, while uh, Kubernetes supports in place restored, the way that it does it is create a new volume and then swap the DB. CSI doesn't support in place restores. Uh, in the future, we, could, we can think about adding in place restores, um, but if you try to do an in place restore for a volume that doesn't exist. It's just like trying to do an attach on a, on a volume that doesn't exist. The storage system simply says that volume doesn't exist. I can't do that. But I think the in place restore we're talking about is different, right? Because you're talking about like keeping the PC, but the underneath right. the PC still right. changed. It's still new. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's the clarification. Yeah. While we support in place restore in Kubernetes, mm -hmm. it's not a true in place restore. From the Kubernetes side, we're actually creating a new volume and swapping PBs. Uh, a true in-place restore would be at the CSI level. That's not something that we support, at least in V1. In the future, we may support it. And then it's got a good well, what happens if you do in-place restore and the volume doesn't exist? And that's just like doing any other operation on, uh, on a volume that doesn't exist. Like so doing volume. All I was getting at is if you want to do that in-place restore, you have to have at the level where you're allowed to do that, restore, right. which means it has to be part of your model, and then you get back to your model to repeat it. And get to that model. I mean, it's it's just like doing an attach, right? We've got a, um, a controller publish volume call uh, inside the controller publish volume. You're allowed to specify the source volume and to know that it must be attached to. And so, if you call that call, and for some reason, you know, your Kubernetes has lost its mind and it's calling uh, a volume that doesn't exist. The storage system basically handles that as an error case. So this would be similar if we, in the future, introduce a new call to do an in-place restore. It would be a new operation, and the operation would allow you to specify the name of some sort of pointer to the volume. And if the system says this volume doesn't exist, uh, it'll just return an error. Well, then that requires the user to remember what the 
on the session. Uh, and and that that's that that would be fine. So it would like if you go back to that Kubernetes in uh, restore discussion, um, you can you can only restore PV PVCs that exist at least on the Kubernetes side. So on the Kubernetes side, we would have the state or at least the name of the volume that should be in place restored. And here, if you look at here, there is a, actually a source volume ID there. So you do have an ID for that volume. So think about it as, as there's the source of truth, which is the actual storage system, and then there's what Kubernetes thinks is the source of truth. So before an in-place restore begins, Kubernetes has to say, well, do I think this even exists? And the way that Kubernetes says the volume is existing is whether the PVPVC object exists for it. So if that exists for it, then it'll allow the in-place restore to continue, but it happens that the actual underlying volume doesn't exist, then yeah, basically, Kubernetes is asking for a on a volume that doesn't exist. Uh, 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 so, so, sure. so, so, the, the, so, <laughs> what you're suggesting, you're saying you create a snapshot, but it's not represented in Kubernetes? It has no point of actually using something. It has, you mean a snapshot. The one for today, that is actually tied to it. Okay. Yeah. And when you delete the volume, up and you just see the bank Yeah, it's kind of like right now. reconciliation. Okay. So we just accept the fact that it's then like, oh, yeah. we need a repair. <laughs> That's not a big deal. I just want to understand it. Yeah, I, I, that's so the, here's a clarify. Yeah. Another thing, just to clarify, though, is some of this discussion is kind of irrelevant. First of all, it's irrelevant because we don't have our version yet. But once we do, um, the call would never make it down to the plugin anyway. If, the, if, if, if the, the yeah, if the volume is deleted. Yeah, that's true. So the Kubernetes <laughs> API. So I think that what he's trying to say is the inverse. So volume. Actually, yeah, because Kubernetes will yeah, right? kind of flip out and see it. Yeah, it, it wasn't clear to me that we had that, that point of view, but it, it would, I, I assume that, yeah, we wouldn't have a player if we wanted yeah, to be a okay. But yeah, it'll be really cool if we uh, do add real in place restores. Uh, are you, any of you aware of storage systems that support true in place restores? Yes. All right, so yeah. there's concrete use cases. I found that nobody uses it. We have it. Yeah. People choose not to use it. Why? They like because they like to create from snapshot. Okay. So people like to collect things. Yeah, my experience is that it's a pretty proven for the application model is often much quicker to create and roll what that well, essentially instantaneous. See, that's where we're we're the opposite. So our product is actually faster to actually create and do it. So uh but I, I would make no presumptions as to, you know, there are stories. Yeah, no, it's a good point. point. It's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah. Everybody's perspective is on, on some of the common scenario is to effectively use snapshots as very quickly restorable things kept locally, and then they replicate to storage in a different failure domain with backups. Yep. Uh, and there's overlap. So they might keep a couple snapshots locally on prem and then in parallel with that you're doing lazy copies of off premises storage public cloud or elsewhere. Sounds like and, you know, <laughs> but it's it, it's done at the storage provider level here. So I think that when you design the control plane interface of this you better anticipate those patterns that would uh, support and maybe even expect that in those use cases where that comes in very handy. No, and I, I totally agree. I, he just asked if anybody supported it. And he said, so it sounds like there is definitely a use cases for it. Maybe in a future version we can uh, consider yeah. it. And in terms of dangling referencing a lot of way, there are some places where you know, the oh. common use cases for that is operator error. So <laughs> an operator error might be somebody deleted the volume accident. And some of them would retain those snapshots. Kubernetes might lose the reference, but if there was a way to recreate 
a volume from external information that would allow Kubernetes to mount it. That could be your recovery center. Do we have an input volume socket? Okay. It's somewhere on the list. <laughs> Stop and pop this question. Sure. Do the PDs make references to the snapshots as well? Uh, so PD. Can I query a PD for the snapshots? Well, it's actually it's, it's in the snapshot, it's not in the PD. Basically, it's not in the PD. I don't have that slide. Yeah, it's a snapshot to PD, not to be the snapshot. So there's a volume snapshot and there's a volume snapshot data. The volume snapshot data is similar to the PD. Volume snapshot is similar to the snapshot. So from PDK, I can go to volume snapshot data? No, there's no point here. From PDK to snapshot. First snapshot, it's from when you type the snapshot, you will say PDK with PDK name. That's how it's done. I see. So I'm clearly going through all the use cases. Does not keep the snapshot if the original PD is lost. Let's say you started the original volume, you keep writing out the snapshots. And if you haven't promoted these snapshots to go to a different place, whether you want to rank them up independently from the original volume. And the original volume is gone, the vendor takes the snapshots. So in that case, our vendor comes to know if, a, if an original PD is getting leaked, all the snapshots being taken the disk. So probably it is can clean it at this disk. I can find that thing up explicitly what I need to know. I need to scan through all the snapshots to look at reference back. Or when you create a state within, within myself, or can I still query when it is for something? So that's a good use case. Yeah, currently, you have to scan all the snapshots. All the snapshots? Uh, right. Because we don't have the pointer. But we, we can think about this use case and see whether we need to have that pointers from C so, to snapshots. So basically, you have a one ID here. So this snapshot is the source value, and then I can add all the snapshots at one to one. Yeah, I would shy away from adding more pointers. Uh, uh, the more pointers you have, the more likely you are to. As long as there's an interface, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So if I can pass it, this is like I can pass the source volume ID yeah. and get all the snapshots yeah. for that one. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So, so this uh, this discussion. So, sorry, sorry, you know, I, I got back. So can we invoke this from within the CSI plugin itself? Yeah, this is actually this is a CSI interface, right? So this is basically so the no, no, as long as the CSI implements this, the plugin implements this, and you can. No, I. I, 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 I oh, from so outside. Yeah. yeah, it has it has to invoke content and invoke these mm -hmm. interfaces from inside as well. This is it. So actually, this is actually an algorithm that you can find. So here we are defining the uh, CSI interface, right? So this one actually implemented inside the plugin itself, so we can call it inside. But actually, I'm not sure that we are, we will be providing an, an API to, to call this because the API is on the API. Yeah, 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 so we can get it from the yeah, so we can get it from the database. It's not going to. So so yeah. So this one right now is only at the plugin level, right? So you can't really call it from outside. You may have to call it. Oh, this is like a you can call it. You can call it. This will internally call the database. Yeah, internally, but I'm saying we don't have a Kubernetes or we don't have an API to call it. Because when you call Kubernetes, this snapshot is going to get it from the EDC and it's not going to call it from the so, so that's at that level. So, yeah, at the Kubernetes level, you only have access to the Kubernetes API and you don't have direct access to CSI. So, uh, for your use case, you would have to do a get snapshot, and if snapshot doesn't have a permission, then you're kind of out of luck. Or you have to find some way to go around Kubernetes and talk directly to the vendor. If there is a case where the API is not providing you some standard thing that it should, then you should be talking to these two to see if the API can modify. Yeah. So, I have to add to that, that the CSI driver can do whatever it wants. You can, you can open a port. But I mean, the idea I think with a lot of consumers is they don't want to have to hard code every uh, single system. Uh, ideally, they want to go through a standard Kubernetes API. And so, if in the use case where it's, I, I agree. I just, I there are options. Yeah. There are options. Yeah. Uh, this this use case, though, I mean, if you are the provider that's returning the snapshot IDs, so if you want to maintain a list of snapshot 
but I use for a volume, you can maintain that as the tip, as in your or in your story. Well, that's, not, that's not my question. Is. Okay. Like, do we maintain a CA or does the system only maintain a CA? You maintain the CA. Yeah. Like we have like space right now, so we maintain any of the space. Yeah, I think so. Well, you know, you can This is like a state of plan, more than planning level, right? So it's actually retreating from the social system itself. So I've got a, a question about the IDs. Anticipate or offering guidance that these are GUIDs, time only, or are they human readable things where people could define their own? Uh, this is for the, there's two IDs. There's the name that's passed in, uh, create a snapshot, and then there's the ID. Transaction ID. Transaction ID. Okay. But not readable. Then the return ID probably yeah, I think the only limitation you put on it is like string length. It's just, I, I want to point out that in a backup scenario, it's common, you know, like you said, you have to look at the snapshot ID and cross reference them to volumes yeah. that may have disappeared. If the reference to the disappeared one is a GUID, people will never remember that. Yet, if it's a human readable name that they invent their own, you're going to have potential name collisions. There's yeah. no, there's no good answer there. Yeah, Chris actually pointed out uh, something similar with the create volume call, where the names that Kubernetes was generating were very, very uh, similar for every single volume, which were the. And then after that. Well, the, the programmatic system would care for a human reader, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, I think some of it's going to be fit and finish stuff that we need to look at before we go to the other. Yeah. In typical commercial backup products that I've seen, you come up with a catalog that would list these, all the attributes you know about, like when it was created, things like that that help somebody find it. But then those potentially are security sensitive so that you only allow an admin to do it. Mm -hmm. it sounds like a good, uh, good thing for a backup API. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, uh, the components that are generating those names will be part of Kubernetes and we'll be able to, to run through when we get to that. So for now, this is just on the CSI side. So this is a great volume request. We just added a, a volume content source. Right now, we just take a snapshot. That's a source snapshot ID and the source. Um, so here, basically, we will going to have an entry snapshot controller. And we'll be watching the volume snapshot and volume snapshot data. And, and then it should select you know, this is a CSM request or not. Uh, so um, we want to support both entry and, uh, uh, and the CSI plugin for the snapshot feature. Then we handle both. Um, so we will look at the, the entry snapshot controller. We'll be looking at the status of the volume snapshot data and then decide whether it's time to find the volume snapshot and the volume snapshot data. And our entry snapshot controller for external snapshotter, it's also going to watch snapshot, and then um, it will be creating the uh, create snapshot request that we were looking at earlier, and then uh, it will be calling the, the CSI plugin to take the snapshot. Um, and then when that's done, it's going to create a volume snapshot data object. Uh, an auto choose data plugin, it uh, takes the snapshot and uh, it also um, will be um, turning this great snapshot response that we talked about earlier. Let's see that design. So, um, the entry central controller auto tree for a data plugin. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't have a slide for the, the, the small part. Um, basically, Jim has already talked about this in tree key controller that we need to modify. But uh, for the outer tree, we also have an external provisioner for the CSI that we need to be modified to handle that. Uh, 
But we do need the entry piece first because we need the API, and then there's a lot of uh, uh, like the watchers and the list, those okay. kind of things are generally inside, okay. graphics APIs inside. So we need How's that work looking? Is it uh, yeah, it's only progress, so have some have working. Okay. Um, but we can actually start, you know, uh, I don't know if we need to wait until after the sure, feed no, after the sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, we can probably we can start, you know, with the API. Like, this, this is going to be a very big PR, right? So probably need to do that in stages, like the API first and yeah. then the controller, because otherwise I'm not sure what is the, the connection the for, ways. okay. Yeah. Small as possible. Okay. The only challenge with API first is if the rest of it doesn't make it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have to take a look at that, right? Yeah. So we could start the, uh, some PR for the just API piece, and then on top of that, some the, the rest of the piece. So we can definitely we can start maybe next week or something. Cool. Yeah, exciting. Yeah. This is gonna be, uh, gonna be great. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns about snapshots? <laughs> All right. So, just uh, in case uh, we didn't answer in the questions, so we can read through this, not covered by the design. So, let us know. So, we need to help. Uh, so, for this work, if we are interested to like, volunteer some part of the work, that's actually part of the work. 